Hey golfers, welcome to the next episode of the Road to the PGA Championship with Thomas Campbell. And today I'm joined by Danny Farrell. We're going to be discussing some, some putting that I need to work on as I get myself ready for the National Club Pro. Mm -hmm. Yes, I qualified again. Yes. As much as it was a roller coaster for me, <laughs> I did advance through our section championship. I yeah. finished in the top eight and I advanced to the National Club Pro Championship, which yes. is going to be played in April of 2023. Awesome. Yeah, I did take a peek at your last scorecard too, your last round. Like you said, it was a roller coaster. Yeah, so you've made it through. Congrats. That's awesome. <laughs> but what I find interesting is we just had a brief conversation on your putter. Yeah. You being the master figure you are and the thinker and tinker you are, it was surprising to find out you didn't know how much loft you were playing on your putter. That could be a result of a lot of the issues you've been having out there too. So we're definitely going to dive into Quintech to yeah. find that out especially playing an arm lock as well. So, got a lot to go over. We're gonna jump on Quintech, roll a few putts. Let's talk after that. Let's do it. So Danny, uh, we're looking at my putter again. I believe this again. is not the first time <laughs> on this series that I brought my putter in to take a look at. Yeah. Um, let's face it, I'm, I'm a good putter a lot of the times, mm -hmm. and a lot of people think I'm a good putter. Yeah. But then the other half of the time, I don't know what is going on. Right. So inconsistency, okay. for sure. Okay. And I think, you know, the section championship was a great example of that for me. So I shot 72, 72. You think, well, that's consistent. Well, sure. I had 21 putts on the first nine holes of my second round. Okay. And I had to take a look at the leaderboard. I'm like, how many shots <laughs> do I have to go under par to <laughs> finish in the top eight? Yeah. And then I went on a little bit of a streak. Then I, I hold did. some 25 footers, 60 footers, okay. miss a four footer. Okay. So I, let's talk about that back nine yeah. because this was was just quite quite the roller coaster mm -hmm. to try and advance through and get through to the national championship for me. Yeah. I came through the nine holes, first nine holes, three over par. Okay. So I'm okay. like, well, I got to maybe get to even or, or one under to stand a chance. Yeah. I go out par five, driver wedge. Make a 25 footer, eagle. Okay. Good Bonus. Start. Love it. 25 footer. Okay. Then I miss the green with a wedge, miss the green again, okay. hit it at 15 feet, make the putt. I'm like, well, what's wrong with your putter? Then I make it a 440 footer for another birdie. So I'm like, what's going on here? All of a sudden I'm making putts after not making putts. Right. And then I make a 60 footer for eagle. <laughs> Just raining them in. So I've gone the eagle, par, one putt par. Yeah. Um, and then. No, sorry, eagle bogey, one putt bogey, okay. birdie, par, eagle, and then I hit the four feet. <laughs> Straightest putt in the world. And I'm thinking, well, now I make this, I'm inside the number, comfortably right. inside the number by maybe right. two or three shots. Please tell me you made it. Didn't even stand a chance. Okay. Yeah. It was a putt where it was like a slightly, just slight left to right putt. Yeah. And it's by tendency with my short putts, it's been just to pull it just a touch okay. on my short putts. Okay. Um, so I missed that, then I get a flyer over the green with wedge, mm -hmm. make double, chip it over the green, chip it up the four, five feet, miss it again, okay. get up and down out of the bunker on the 17th, and then two putt the last for birdie okay. to then get in a playoff. Luckily advanced through the playoff. <laughs> yeah. But I felt like I have been making more, this is not a bad problem, but it's right. made more 40 footers than I have four footers. Just hearing your story walking through the back nine there, I, I can see that. You know, hearing I, I made 25 footer, made a 40 footer, made a 60 footer. But then when I got to four or five feet, we had two misses on the back nine. Yeah. So what's going on from that piece? Maybe Quintech will help us solve some of those issues. Maybe it's an alignment thing. Maybe it's a club thing, you know, yep. where we can definitely influence some things. Uh, or maybe it's a setup thing. We want Quintech to help us with that as well. But biggest struggle right now is from four or five feet. We got to right. diagnose that, figure out that today. Because your speed's pretty good if we're making My 40, 60 footers, yeah. not yeah. worried about speed, but it's what's happening inside 10 feet that we right. want to get you primed up for with the big tournament coming up uh, yeah. next spring. Yeah, and I've been doing a lot of putting drills, clock drills, four or five okay. footers, okay. go out on the putting green, make a lot of those. String line, chalk line, okay. laser, okay. put it down, T drills hitting between the T's. Mm -hmm. and do it really, really well. But then under pressure, it's just, it just gets a little bit off. And okay. this is where I'm like, I just really want to really find something that I can work on here. I got a couple of weeks left in my season yeah. for an event, so I'm probably not going to 
implement those changes right away. Okay. But I have some time here until end of April to really dial in my putting stroke over, this, over the winter. Love it. So, so I'm looking for things to do. Yeah, let's look at some small stuff today that we can fix, like loft and lie, make sure that's in a good spot. Let's look at your setup and maybe you know, influence a different routine for you. That way we stop thinking so much inside 10 feet and just yep. trust it again like you do from 60 feet. That's right. important, right? <laughs> so we know, what, we know the goals for today. Let's roll a few on Quintech, see kind of what we learned from there and see what adjustments need to be made, if any, to this putter. All right, sounds good. So first putt there, I'm, I'm finding this quite interesting. I've created hook spin on the bowl there. Mm -hmm. Yet I missed right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And it also launched really high. Probably face being a little bit open. Yeah, that could be it. But also, how much loft we're playing on the putter. I looked at it before we started this. Couple things spec wise, seven degrees of loft. Okay. Which from what we just saw there, a little on the high side. Yep. Okay. And then lie angle is right at seventy one. So one degree upright. Yeah. Standard. I think so. I feel comfortable with the lie angle. Yeah. So, you know. This putter I just ended up getting from the Minneapolis store because I was having a hard time with my last putter. I wanted to right. go back to arm lock. Yep. So I had it cut down to right length and just threw this on. So that's what I did. I'm like, I don't want to know a single thing about the numbers. <laughs> yeah. I just want to change. Yeah. I knew I know this from loft. I'm looking down this, I can see that white <laughs> face. Yep. So the problem, however, is I'm left eye dominant. Mm -hmm. And I get that ball position quite far forward in my stance. Mm -hmm. Add that in with seven degrees of loft. Yep. I've Get a launch the ball high, right? Absolutely. And yeah. you know, having more loft on it, I'm not surprised by that. Because of it being an arm lock, everything is catered to more of a shaft lean positively or forward. So I would expect more loft, but seven degrees, we're not real aggressive on loading it left for you with the grip itself. Right. So I, I think we can definitely help there. Get that ball to launch a little bit easier. You know, maybe let's try and diagnose the hook spin as well because that's where that pole's coming from for you as well. Yep. So maybe we can help identify that. But before we do, let's see two more rolls, make sure it's consistent before we do any tweaks. Okay? Sounds good. That was a better stroke. Yes, yes it was. Yeah, so that was, that was better, but we're still launching out a little on the high side. Yep. I like the fact that, like you said, we brought up a little bit of forward roller over spin on there. But still, the, the hook spin is prevalent in there yeah. from 12 to 16. So viewers at home that haven't been on Quintech, haven't seen the numbers, it plays really similar to a traffic light. I'll explain it that way. Red, hey, we got to pump the brakes. That needs some adjusting. Green, we're all good. Orange plays yellow. So it's, it's OK, right? We can yeah. get by with that. Right. But I would love to see that get down in between you know, less than 10, because that way the starting line of that ball you have more confidence in how the ball rolls and right. starts, okay? So the, the hooks and cut spin, it's mm -hmm. gotta be a little bit path stuff, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's what I've been working a lot on. I mean, I my tendency is to take it a little bit on the out on the way across mm -hmm. and then kind of cut across it. And there's no wonder I probably create a little bit of hook spin because I'm kind of coming a little bit. Probably, is that also yeah. why we're a little offset too, trying to influence the path to come in? Yeah, so I drop my right foot back. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll really drop it back to try and fit get myself to take it a little more on the okay. inside and way back. Okay. Yeah. Is that something that you feel like follows through on no matter what length of the putt it is? Are you set the same way or in short putts, do you think maybe we're standard? Um, I, think I, think it's I, I, I think it's fairly consistent. Okay. I've, I've got okay. a good routine of trying to drop the foot back. Now under pressure, maybe I'm not so much thinking about that as right. much, right? right? And maybe I go back to kind of the old, old style and mm -hmm. get a four or five footer when you got to right. finish in the top eight. That's right. when you probably forget about that. <laughs> right, it gets a little nervy. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, let's roll one more. We've seen two, two characteristics that we want to work on, launch and side spin. Yep. Okay, so that, that stayed consistent for us. Yeah, I mean, I felt like a good stroke, but once again, that, that hook spin, there's some hook spin there. Mm -hmm. So down the line, when you're standing behind me, do you know? Can you notice anything? Does it look like I'm taking it back straight, or does it feel like it look like it's out? Or it's it's slightly right now. It looks like it's slightly out. Okay. And then face has been. You're trying to pinch that close to prevent you from the miss that's been right. Yep. So it's almost that that straight pull. 
you know, the outside yep. in pull, the double cross, almost looks like what's happening. But, you know, again, the two big ones that <laughs> have shown their colors already, they're following suit again, high launch angle, and more hook spin than what we've seen so far. Okay. Yep. So, first off, that launch angle, being a little on the high side, best players in the world, what we're looking for is more in between one and two. Okay, so playing seven degrees aloft, we could probably, you know, go a little bit lower on there. Yeah, probably yeah we've got two bit. things, right, we can do. I can try and put the ball position further back in my stance, we could or do that as well. I can just knock it to five. Right. And yeah. I think short term, mm -hmm. knocking to five is going to be the best. I agree, because with yeah. you being left eye dominant, if we move that ball position back, it's going to be hard for you to get lined up yep. every time. I don't want to influence that. I want minor changes because of how well you have been putting from the long range. This is just to help on the short. Yeah. So I think we, if we take a little bit of loft off, let's come back and revisit the numbers after that. Why don't you do that? One more. That looks like it moves. Close. Five. Right at five now. Right at five? Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's How's the line go? 70 to one flat, or standard actually, which might, might help with the. That's, the yeah, let's see what it does. Well, I'll say looking down at this right, of, right off the bat, I don't see as much of the white face. Okay. Which is what we were going for. That was great. Big changes. So we took the the loft down from seven to five. Okay, so we influenced that. Then in an effort to try and get the, the hook spin to come down as well, we adjusted the lie at the same time. So we went seven degrees aloft to five from 71 on the lie angle or one degree upright to standard at 70. Yep. Now, we accomplished one of the goals. We got that ball to launch in a proper window now. We create a little bit more forward or overspin on that golf ball as well. So two big things there. Yep. The ball started to roll right away, but we're still seeing that little bit of hook spin in there. Okay. So now we're three out of four, but I like that launch angle now. Yep. And I think that hook spin, I think that's going to be a little bit more of me, you know, working on the path this winter time. Yeah. And I mean, I agree. And playing a little bit longer putter, just like a driver, it's a little bit easier to bring it more inside with yep. the length being longer. So we may not have to bring that, that right foot as far back. We could possibly start inching that back more forward. I mean, that would well. feel more comfortable for sure. Yeah. I mean, I will say I have right to left putts, mm -hmm. make those all day. I have no problem kind of pushing it out and having okay. it roll, roll this way. Okay. The left or right putts, those putts I have to hit just on the left edge. Yeah. A lot of them, I'm, you know, they'll hit them left edge and it'll stay left edge. So gotcha. Just slightly pull it. Gotcha. But I have a harder time. I think most right-handed golfers do struggle more with left yep. to right. -ers. Yeah, me too, but for yeah, sure. For sure, right to left. It's comfortable just because I'm creating that, that hook spin there and mm -hmm. just diving in the hole. Yes. Yeah. But let's roll two more and make sure we're consistent here. We're trending numbers. in the right direction. Yeah. Best numbers we've seen so far. What I like is how consistent the launch is now, how consistent the overspin is, and that ball is starting to roll. So we cut that down a little bit there. Now we're in the, the yellow or the orange, so playable for sure. But these two conditions, the top two, that's what I really wanted to influence. So we've, we've done our job today. Yep. I think that third one's gonna come from a little bit of winter work like you wanna put in as well. Right. I've had great success with lasers as well. So maybe that's something we bring in in the next video for you yep. is a little bit of laser work. Cause I think a lot of this is going to be alignment. We talked a little bit about that right foot, how that might be influencing more of the, the hook spin that we like. Yep. And you said it might be a comfort thing as well to move that back. So two things we can definitely look at across the winter for you, but we don't want to make those changes now. Right. We've made big changes to the putter already. We've seen better results too. Yeah. I have, I definitely have all winter. I've got my own little putting green. <laughs> yeah, at home, the so barn. I've yeah. got, uh, I get plenty of time. Yes, in the and I'll be to around too. My putting path for sure. Yes. But yeah, I think this is a good point. I don't like. As I said I've got a couple of really important events here to finish up mm -hmm. on the section, um, Minnesota section, to try and win still Player of the Year. Yes. So, come middle of October. That's when I'm probably going to hang up the play mode. Yep. And then that's when I'm going to start transitioning. I'll pretty much have 
six entire months. My wow. national, you know, national club pro is not till the end of April. April. Right. Um, so I really, so that to me it sounds like a lot of time to really get it done. In. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we can fine tune grips as well. We can fine tune length and really kind of dial it in. We did talk a little bit about grip too, how it might be influencing a setup that might not be proper for you too. How maybe something smaller. Yeah, it'll give you more feel, so that could help with the path training as well. Yeah. But also kind of getting you in a better position at address too. So I think a smaller grip should be talked about down the road too for you. Very good. Well, so golfers, in summary here, I have qualified again for the National Club Pro. Yes. That's, I'm very happy about that. As much as it was a roller coaster to get there, <laughs> yes. I got there, had to win a playoff, but <laughs> I, I got there, had to rally on the back nine. So that's, that's exciting. Um, so I've got that at the end of April. Uh, I think it's Twin Waters down in New Mexico. Awesome. You're playing about 5,000 feet. A little so elevation. Yeah, a little yep. elevation. <laughs> um, so that, I'm looking forward to that a lot. Um, I've got my couple more events to finish up here mm -hmm. in the fall. If I end up winning Nash the Minnesota Player of the Year, mm -hmm. I might get spot on 3M Open. So awesome. that's what I'm chasing right now in the next couple of weeks. But otherwise, future videos will focus on getting myself ready for mm -hmm. National Club Pro. I finished top 20 in that, get to play in the PGA Championship. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. A lot of big things going on. A lot of big things that happened today with the putter as well. So we expect big things on these next coming tournaments with you too. Right, yeah. So golfers, if you want to follow my progress, make sure to subscribe to our channel.